here comes the introduction then. My name is Christopher Kaiser. Greetings, friends of the Marin County Bicycle Coalition. Welcome to the third in the last summer cycling celebrity series of interviews and webcasts, podcasts, whatnot, what have you. Uh, very happy to be here today with my sidekick, your friend, Carolyn Diesendorf of the Marin, Marin, Caroline Diesendorf of the Marin County Bicycle Coalition. Caroline, hello. Hey, how's it going? And we're really excited today to be joined by two awesome Marin locals. Um, I think Marin's like total power couple, Olivia Dillon and Taylor Weil. So before we get into it with them, um, just a reminder, this is episode three of The Lost Summer, um, which is a benefit for Marin County Bicycle Coalition and for local COVID relief efforts for uh, proceeds going to uh, Canal Alliance and to West Marin Senior Services. So if you haven't already, go to our website, marinbike.org slash lost summer and enter a drawing for a giveaway. And Kaiser, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that giveaway? Well, uh, first on the giveaway is the grand prize. It's uh, again, $10 per entry uh, from your donations. But uh, Mike Spikes has graciously offered up a 2020 edition of the Diverge from Specialized. It's the pro carbon model with a SRAM axis shifting. Uh, it's got big tires, big wheels. Uh, I've been eyeballing this bike myself for a while. And again, this is donated by Mike's bike. So uh, I'm, I wish I was eligible for it actually. So thank you, Mike Spikes and, and all the contributors to, to the Lost Summer Series giveaway. Uh, just look on the website, marinbike.org forward slash Lost Summer and you'll see all the prizes that are available. But I'd like to introduce uh, our guests, if I may. Marin County's cycling premier power couple, uh, Olivia, Dill Olivia Dillon and Taylor Wiles. Uh, Olivia Dillon is a retired racing cyclist hailing from Ireland. Uh, she won a handful of Irish National Time Trial Championships between 08 and 2012. And she also won the Road Tra Championship in 2010. Uh, she's currently director of sales for, for Velocio Cycling Apparel. Uh, super impressive woman. Really happy to have her on board. Joining her is her wife, uh, Taylor Wiles. Taylor is an American cyclist racing for the Trek Segafredo Women's Pro Tour team. Uh, she's had, uh, her Palmares are too long to list. She's had second overall on the Tour of California. Um, more recently, she had an epic win last year in the third stage of a Basque country race. I can't pronounce, I, I don't speak Euskera, the Basque language, but uh, I think it's about Imakaumimbira, uh, but we're gonna discuss that later. Uh, enough of me talking, let's welcome to the Lost Summer Series, Olivia Dillon and Taylor Wiles. Hello, ladies. Hello, hello. Thanks nice. for having us. Nice to see you both. Excellent. Uh, so where'd you ride today? Oh gosh. I did Marshall and then home Tam, so Marshall and then all the way down the coast, up Highway 1, back Panoramic, down Alpine, straight home, because now we live at like the base of Alpine, which is awesome. Excellent. I did a quick Tamarancho lap from, from here. You can just ride now. We just moved, so we now have kind of a different a different road to go, and yeah, I went up, um, up to Toyon and, and just did a quick uh, loop of Tamarancho on my mountain bike, so. I did Fantastic. five hours to go ride Marshall and, and, and uh, <laughs> I, I love you say you didn't have five hours to do that although you were once yourself a professional cyclist and in your retirement years you were still training like a total beast is that true that is true I will confirm no, no training and just ride just this like is what ride. she says but sometimes she still kicks my head. can we just talk about though that she's not just a retired pro road cyclists like she is still kicking butt and gravel events all over the place oh that was tongue-in-cheek completely when i said <laughs> retired you couldn't see the air quotes <laughs> but yeah i i wasn't being trite when i said they're marin's power couple i mean come on uh yeah <laughs> tell us about it olivia tell us how retirement is for racing <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's i don't know um no doing stuff is super fun and that kind of all got started here really right with grasshopper series and and you know riding less on the road and more on the dirt and then finding an avenue to to kind of compete that way has been really fun over the last few years so, so you have a lot of residual fitness from uh, elbowing the missus to get out and train her on her bike you go out keep her company it turns out you're totally fit and ready to race 
Well, it kind of is a bit of a secret weapon, I have to say, because if I want to ride with her, right, I have to keep riding. So, <laughs> so that's why I don't call it training, because I'm actually just riding my bike, trying to keep up, and therefore I end up being fit and being able to go and race these things. <laughs> so. You guys were doing some like cool bike packing stuff around Marin earlier in the the summer, right? Oh yeah, for Olivia's birthday, she's wanted to bike pack for a really long time, so. Me, my family and her family all kind of pulled together and got her a bunch of bike packing gear. And so on her birthday, actually, we went bike packing and, and slept on a beach. And oh, it was amazing. And now we're hooked. Now we want to go bike packing all the time. I mean, some of you guys <laughs> Point Reyes National Seashore, which if, if people have not been out there, I mean, it's literally like amazing. Heaven. It's so beautiful. And the trails are just really stunning. And, and uh, obviously, it was very quiet during that time. But yeah, the beaches and you can access it them by, you know, hiking or by bike. So super fun. Pretty wonderful. That's fantastic to hear that you're taking full advantage of living in Marin County. It's I'm, I'm surprised at how many people live here, pay mortgages and land taxes here and, and don't fully appreciate it like you two do. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. And to be honest, we because we just moved only a mile and a half where from where we were living for nine years, we're just on the other side of Fairfax in, in Cascades. And we didn't even know some of the stuff that was over here. Like, there's so I've many just trails. going for hikes around here, like yeah. those really nice loops you can do down in Cascades and just all the trails and then yeah. by bike as well. So, and then I hear some of that's like amazing in the fall and winter when it, or when it's raining. So we yeah. can look forward to that too. We feel like we moved to a whole new town. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> So a lot of that Fantastic. is like exploring the San Geronimo open space area, or is that? Oh, you can get up to San Geronimo from here, yeah, or to Tamarancho, like I said, or other places. So, um, yeah, it's it's really nice. <laughs> Excited. Well, I want to change gears a little bit. I, 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 we all can talk about how much we love Marin County forever, but I want to change gears just a little bit. Uh, we have a, a most of our listeners are not fortunate enough to come from bike racing backgrounds and such, and you yourself, Olivia, actually were not originally headed to be a full-time athlete you started off in finance is that right yeah i did went to college in ireland and spent a few years in dublin working for a while and then moved to new york city and got into finance and and did did that whole thing for probably 11 years or so um but started found some friends in new york that i started riding with um and then when i moved out to california i got into into bike racing so yeah, it wasn't a, a typical route at all. Um, so, but very happy to have found it. I I, I, th I thought it was worth mentioning because you know it's, it's never too late if if you've got it in your blood, you've got the drive, uh, and you're clearly a, a driven human being. So, it's yeah, a nice transition for you. In the early thirties before I started racing. So, um, uh, which yeah, I feel pretty lucky to have had the opportunity and to have been able to do that. So. Um, I wasn't very happy in with what I was doing, um, so uh, I found, found the ability to kind of pivot and go a different direction and have them look back. So, so lucky Dublin to New York City to uh, Cascade Canyon—that's quite a quite a spectrum you've covered there. Yeah, were you guys on the same team when you first started? Was that both <laughs> team? Yeah, we both started. Well, I she was on. Peanut Butter and Company 2012, a year before I was on that team, and then I signed out that team. Yeah, that was my first pro team. It was your first pro team as well. But. Yeah, yeah, I was on 2010, and then Taylor joined in 2011. That's how we met. Yeah, and so uh, started locally that, that team here, and that was Taylor's first introduction to Marin. She should tell you about that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, but I, I we have to back up a little bit. This is too exciting for me. Uh, <laughs> I never Google people that I I meet socially, but in preparation for this, I Googled you two. No. Holy <laughs> cow! What amazing race histories you have. I know you're total total badasses, but then like I saw the list of everything, and I was uh, tell me the name of your national tour that you won four times running, Olivia. Ross Namon. <laughs> okay, pronounce it one more time. Called Ross Namon, which means race of women in, in Irish and Gaelic. And but it's uh, okay. phenomenal. It's race. phenomenal. But if you were to read it phonetically, it looks like Ross Naman or something like that. Exactly. That's why that's why I heard, I didn't want her laughing at me. 
Yeah, yeah, but the story there is, Kaiser, I guess I won it three times in a row, won the pink jersey, and it was awesome. And Taylor kept being like, oh, that race looks so good. You know, I'd really love to do it. And I was like, come on, you should do it then. So she joined a, 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 an Irish team the following year to do it. And of course, won. And then I, then I didn't win, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, was, I, was, I, I saw that and I did the math. I said, so Olivia wins at three years running, and then the Taylor, Taylor wins at the next year. Party, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what I want to know is, is this marriage your revenge for her stealing your race? You just stole her heart. And here we are in Fairfax, kumbaya. <laughs> hey, you told me to try and I went, you should have put me on your team and then I would have had to work for you. But yeah, you yeah. put me on an opposing team. So it was. Oh yeah. my goodness. The girls on my team, they're all Irish national riders said, next time, just, just put her on the hop on, hop off bus in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> Was there ever a time during the race where you two were in a break together or anything like that? Or one was up the road and had some yeah, to chase? Let me out for a stage win. To be I fair. let her out for a stage win. I think that was pretty nice of the pink jersey to do. Yeah, it was. Oh, that is a team director's nightmare, knowing that you two. <laughs> Thankfully, I wasn't with my pro team. Or that would have probably been the end of my contract. But I was yeah. kind of okay. like, well, well, that's was a little inside it out at the same time but you were just kind of with her and that was faster yeah, yeah so <laughs> all right well this is a little inside baseball but i, I want to uh segue that also into the uh empathy that you guys have uh for each other uh olivia you've been on the road in the lashing rain uh, uh turning yourself inside out in races and i was thinking about that when i was watching taylor and her break last year and the bass country if you haven't watched it, viewers, go watch it on YouTube. It's the most epic stage. Taylor Wiles, uh, who looks like a sunny California girl, was out there almost drowning in the rain by herself in the cold. Uh, what was it like for you to watch, Olivia, watching uh, your wife? Oh, my God. Yeah, me watching her race is just like you don't really want to be around. <laughs> it's, it's pretty insane. It's so stressed and, yeah. And it was so exciting, and I'm on with her family and with my family, you know, and we're just all like shouting and screaming. And and uh, but it was it was Twitter. Come on, I think we lost the feed, of course. It was bad. So, <laughs> you know, scroll, scroll, like refresh, refresh. So so stressful, but like you know, totally joyous then at the same time because it was it was a huge win. It was a you know women's world tour stage race and and uh, and she had planned what she was going to do and on, the, on, the, on that day and it worked out and so and it was she finished up a super steep hill and we used to live on a super steep hill so <laughs> <laughs> that driveway did did yeah. it did its job <laughs> okay so i'll turn that around the other way uh taylor when you were on that breakaway by yourself and you're in the tunnel and you're hurting the voice that was driving you on was it yours or was it olivia's and if it was olivia's what was she saying to you oh, it's so funny because olivia was completely in my head because we've talked about you know these moments and and she's as much in this sport as i am now because we spent so much time apart and it's a ton of sacrifice and so i just kept thinking like as much as this hurts this is like the moment that we fight for and this is the moment that like we have sacrificed everything for and you cannot give up and Olivia will not <laughs> let you give up so I definitely had Olivia in my head up, especially because the climb that we finished on was 3k really steep and it I it was so painful but <laughs> I just was like I yeah yeah it was a lot of thinking it was a lot of thinking about Olivia and a lot of thinking about yeah your family and my so family and yeah. all our sacrifices for being apart all the time and missing holidays and yeah that's kind of what you what you dream about big days like that kind of ending that way well I'm, I, so i don't start crying i'm gonna switch gears again uh, <laughs> uh, full-time bike racers olivia your full-time director of sales for velocio clothing uh you're both on the road so much and yet uh four months ago everyone's worlds were turned upside down you two are in spain together uh how have you turned lemons into lemonade and spending time together yeah, I mean, we have not been in one place for four months, and I, I don't know when Since was the we've last been time, together. so, you know, <laughs> to be honest, it's the, the, yeah, it's been really nice to be here and be for this length of time, and we've actually gotten to, like, I think 
explore more of Marin in the area and Taylor's gotten to see a lot more of it because I think often when you're here, you're coming in and out and you're just on such a specific schedule with training and, and then the off season is so short. So yeah, for sure the silver lining is the time we've been able to kind of spend here together in, in one place, so. Hmm. Was there any consideration ever to stay in Girona or did you immediately say, let's get back to Marin County as soon as we can? Yeah, in the beginning, we did kind of consider staying in, in Spain because we, we felt safe there. They were really taking it seriously. And even though it was way worse there then than it was in America, it, we, it just felt very safe and like there was plans in place. And we kind of thought going back, coming back to the U.S. was going to be going back in time, which inevitably happened. Um, but then when things started to get worse and worse and it seemed like we might not be able to make it back to the States if we waited too long and we thought, okay, we better, we better go home because every day things just seemed to get a little bit worse. So then, then we made the decision to come back. Um, but now we kind of have the opposite problem of racing might start up and I, I'm not 100% sure I can get back over there. So that's also a, a tricky thing. So you were originally supposed to fly out tomorrow? Was that supposed to happen? Yeah, I think I had told Caroline we might be <laughs> gone. Don't know if here on the night. Yeah, because I, well, I had, was supposed to go to a team camp that started on the 13th. Um, but then when the EU came out on the 1st of July and said, yeah, no Americans are allowed into the EU, then we kind of were, have been trying to figure it out. And right before we left Spain, we almost had a residency. And if we'd gotten that, we'd be able to go. So right now, it's just my team and everybody is, is trying to find a way for me to be able to travel there. But yeah, every day it changes. So it's just kind of living living a little bit in limbo. That's feel for you. It, it's hard enough to be a motivated cyclist as it is. We have to create these things to keep us getting out there every day and, and riding hard. And um, for me, I just don't want to get fat, but you have a job that you got to maintain. So um, keep, keep working hard and uh, keep hoping you're going to get back to, to racing soon. Um, yeah, I'm going to remind everybody while, we, while we're on this subject, uh, why we're hosting the Lost Summer, Summer Cycling Celebrity Series. Um, we are raising funds naturally to benefit MCBC and all the work that the, the coalition does, uh, but there are more causes that we're doing this for. 25% of every donation is going to the Canal Alliance and to Marin Senior Services, so not only trying to improve cycling infrastructure here via MCBC, but also trying to give back to the community. Reminder that every $10 you give uh, goes, gives you an entry to the giveaway, cycling giveaway. Uh, the list of prizes is too long to list, but there's things from Easton Cycling, uh, specialized via Mike's Bikes. Um, honestly, just go to Marin or MCBC, or MarinBike.org, excuse me, MarinBike.org forward slash last summer. You can see the whole list. You can see the calendar of events. We have a lot of great interviews coming up. Um, and, and please contribute what you can. Back to Taylor and Olivia. Uh, what interview are you looking forward to seeing? Did you look at the list of people we got coming up? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you already did Kate and you did Payson, was it? And yeah, yeah, we've got Sarah Sturm coming up. Uh, we've got Caroline's team, the Eastern Overland team, the Gravelers coming up. Um, some good stuff. Yeah, awesome. no, it's great that, that you guys are doing this. All right. Uh, I had to ask this. Who's the tougher of you two? <laughs> In what way, Kaiser? This... Actually, that's a good point. Um, just on the road, who, who's the first to get out of bed and go when it's raining outside? Oh, I think Olivia gets yeah, but me I, out in the rain. Yeah, I don't sure. have to do that anymore, right? Yeah, but <laughs> so this kind of like winter slash early, like December and January, Olivia rode with me five, six hour days in the rain multiple times in support because I really don't like to ride in the rain. But when your wife gets up and says she'll go with you, it does make it a lot, a lot better. And she kind of taught me a lot about riding in the rain and sending the rain and just embracing the rain. So yeah. I'd say Olivia's a bit tougher than me for sure. I mean, she grew up in Ireland. It rains like 90% of the time. Right? Yeah. But I didn't really ride there, but yeah. But I think Taylor can probably suffer a lot more than the, the pain yeah. threshold's a little higher. You did 30 Kanto last year. <laughs> yeah, I think you have a pretty high pain tolerance, that's for sure. Yeah, but there's like, yeah, those long hours of that, right, suffering and pain, but then there's like, you know, where you could put yourself 
in a place where you're going to fall off your bike or you can yeah. also do that. <laughs> I've written about you. I kind of feel like it's pretty even. I don't know. <laughs> where? <laughs> well, I think, I think Taylor's going to get uh, tougher just by association being with Olivia. Plus she is younger and we all know the tougher we get or the older we get, the tougher we get. <laughs> what was that? She's the younger one? I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got a lot of toughness to gain. Uh, from here but I do let's uh, let's go to gravel for a second uh what's the what where do you do most of your gravel training Olivia? well here it's like yeah I mean it's so good here because while we have wonderful roads like and really amazing views right the best in the world we don't have a ton of roads so um what's really nice is like mixing the two right going riding your gravel bike on the road and then jumping on a trail um, and Marin's really good for that. I think it really opens up like all of our riding experience to be able to do that. So, you know, whether it's to head out, like last weekend we went out and did Dirt Vision and, um, and came back like on Bow Ridge and, and stuff. So, yeah, it's all. You get the best of, the, best, the best of everything. everything, the best of the road and the best of the dirt. It's, yeah. yeah the, the gravel is so, awesome. So Taylor, you're, you're on the gravel bike, gravel train a little bit now too. Yeah, yeah, that was one of kind of the silver linings of COVID and just getting to train a little differently is that my team gave me a gravel bike and yeah, I really took advantage of it because I wasn't totally sold at first. I should be like, are, are either ride a mountain bike or ride a road bike. Like I just didn't get it. And then, but when you get one and you see how fun it is. And I also think, I don't know, I just really took to the gravel bike because it's so similar position as the road bike. So I just feel very confident on it and it's been a blast like we've had so many adventures and I've seen so much more of Marin than than I would have than I've just seen on the road bike and and I used to be very like road specific and now I can't wait for like um, my coach puts you know whatever bike you want sometimes some days and so I'm like Olivia what bike are we riding today <laughs> yeah is there well, a favorite gravel climb or descent Ooh, I love Bow Ridge I think Bow Ridge is my favorite um kind of stretch and then I Dirt Vision is really cool Coastal is really cool, but I rather that on a mountain bike. Yeah. Word, yo. Both of those, uh, actually, not that's not true. Um, but Bow Ridge is featured in the Adventure Revival ride, which is coming up uh, in September. Was it September, Caroline? Mm -hmm. September twelfth. We actually September twelfth. We did the course for that uh, one day. We we took the the Strava route and and went out and did last year's course. That was really cool. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. Really, but cool. really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, keep in mind, folks, uh, the Adventure Revival, September 12th, uh, an epic ride last year. Uh, we had a couple cycling celebs show up last year. Maybe, who knows, if uh, travel permits aren't granted to our favorite local pro tour cyclist, uh, maybe she'll show up as well and bring her wife. Um, but the Adventure Revival on September 12th is, is a heck of a ride. Um, the benefit for both MCBC and NorCal High School League. So Yeah, even yeah, they worthy. Yeah. Uh, back to uh, training on the gravel and Olivia, I remember the, uh, the Biketoberfest ride we did a few years ago, also an MCBC event with Mike Spikes and a number of others, but all that stuff along Sir Francis Drake that we did, uh, all of us had our eyes open to a whole new world of cycling. Were that long, long day? <laughs> yeah, I remember those and those are like super fun and it's always nice when like there's a new or a person on the ride that knows a trail that you don't know. I just, I really love like trying the new stuff. So, um, and it's cool now that like, you know, they opened Bill's trail and then what's the one we did? Oh, Ponty. Ponty. Recently? Ponty, fantastic trail. So, Thank you, MCBC. Yeah, that was a, we just, we've only done it once. I'll go back and do it again. It yeah, so cause, yeah, I would rather do it on my mountain bike maybe because it was on my gravel bike. Like this. It's really fun on a mountain bike. Yeah. So flowy. Yes. Uh, also mountain bike, if you go to Ponty via Big Rock and over all those big, that's what we to get there. there. Yeah, there's an easier way to get there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool to do it the big wrong way. I enjoyed that yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. If you go the easier way, they'll take away your Irish passport, Olivia. So. Exactly. And that's quite valuable. Well, it was valuable, and now I don't know. <laughs> I'm a resident here, so. So uh, I hear very clearly, uh, Taylor, that you like riding on the dirt, and I was thinking uh, about all your adventures you two are doing. You're doing a lot of camping. You drive that toaster around with a camper on top. <laughs> what's what's your toaster's name? Bitsy. Bitsy. What well, kind of vehicle is it? 
Bitsy and Reggie. Bitsy is a Honda Element, and Reggie is a roof nest. Yeah. All right. So you guys like camping. You like dirt. Um, I'm thinking maybe there's a Cape Epic in your future. So I, I've done Breck Epic, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, Kudos to you for doing that. Yeah, so hard um, at 10,000 feet. And I, to me, I think Swiss Epic is somewhat more appealing um, before Cape. I think Cape Epic, because it's South Africa and all that would be pretty cool. But yes, the partner thing. Uh, but some of the photography I saw from Swiss Epic, that really appeals to me. It looks freaking amazing. So. Maybe. Taylor's awfully silent over there. Yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be happy. Post-road post career. Post-road career, and yeah, Olivia might have to wait for me from time to time. <laughs> Dirt, Dirt is great up, equalizer. There's uphill and there's down. Dirt is the equalizer between us. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and, and you live in the perfect place to train for it, so. Yeah. Well, uh, Caroline, I don't know about you, but I feel like we've had a pretty nice visit with Taylor and Olivia. It's been great. Um, one quick question, because Taylor is notorious for being a cookie monster. Um, right? I'm right, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I got to know, like, what's the go-to, like, ride food, snack, cookie situation? Oh, my gosh. Well, it sounds crazy, but I have this cookie recipe that they're actually gluten and dairy free, which sounds like they would not be good. But they are delicious, yeah, right? It's I, the best cookie. They're like is. better than the normal chocolate, like my granny's, sorry, granny, my granny's chocolate chip cookie <laughs> recipe, like, which has shortening in it, which really, guys, we should, probably should not be eating shortening because who knows what that even is. But they're delicious. <laughs> they are really delicious. And they're, they're, I mean, they're not healthy. They got sugar and stuff. In them. She puts a lot of salt in the cookies. I double Maldron salt. And Maldron salt, of, yeah. Maldron. I always double the salt and I always triple the vanilla and add extra chocolate chips with them. <laughs> I love Olivia's from the Commonwealth where the salt I is from and she- not from the Commonwealth, Kaiser. Oh, sorry, don't, please don't hurt me more. <laughs> it might be a murder. <laughs> <sighs> By words. <laughs> All right, so we can expect that you're gonna post that recipe uh, for the cookies on uh, the show notes for Lost Summer Cycling Celebrity Series. Taylor's tasty Malden salt uh, chocolate chip cookies, triple dosage on the chocolate chips, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's your granny secret recipe. But in general, baked goods are the way to go for Always rice. baked goods, yeah. <laughs> and salty rice cakes. You gotta have a salty to kind of go with the sweet because you can get, your stomach can get sick of the sugar. As so many conversations with cyclists digress into diet, burritos, beers, and chocolate chip cookies in this case. I think we should stop talking about it before we all start grumbling in our tummies. Uh, Taylor, Olivia, thank you for joining us today. Thank, thank you, guys. you guys. This is lovely. Yeah. Good luck. Caroline, one more time. Do you want to tell us about our sponsors and why we're here? Yeah, so real quick, um, thank you to our series sponsors, um, Dolan Law Firm, Bay Area Bicycle Law, The New Wheel, and Marin Cyclists. Um, for sponsoring the series. And again, if you haven't already gone to marinbike.org slash lost summer and um, purchased an entry or two or three or four to our lost summer giveaway, um, please do that. This is raising money for MCBC as well as 25% of everything raised goes to Canal Alliance and West Marin Senior Services. And in return, um, you could be entered into a drawing for a specialized Diverge Carbon Pro. Uh, Olivia has actually um, gave us a Velocio kit as a prize for this as well. Um, Easton Cycling is giving away a couple different prizes, so check those out. And or not is throwing in some swag. So please come purchase um, again at marinbike.org slash lost summer and um, goes to a good cause. So again, everyone, thank you for joining us. Special thanks to Olivia and Taylor, uh, Marin's power couple. Uh, tell your friends about us, please. Uh, all these are gonna be posted on YouTube. Eventually we're gonna make the recordings available as podcasts. Next week we have uh, the perennial Grom who turned adult eventually. Uh, Cameron Falconer, you may know him from Falconer Bikes. 
a uh, very interesting fellow, also moved to the, the dark hills as a hermit, uh, building really gorgeous bikes and uh, a longtime Marin County resident. So please join us next week for Marin County Bicycle Coalition's Lost Summer Celebrity Cycling Interview Series. <laughs> Thank you all for joining and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank, Thank you, you all.